moving day for staff at White Bear Animal Hospital, but our favorite veterinarian, Dr. Stuart Dalton, made time to talk to us today about our pets. Thank you for stopping by. Yes. Absolutely. My Especially pleasure. Especially today with everything going on and back at your... Uh, it's a good hospital. excuse to get out of the craziness, so yeah, thank you for having me. And it's important that we talk about it because we've had some ex excessive heat lately, and right. we've already, as police department, gotten calls about dogs locked right. in cars. Yeah, so a lot of people, I've, I've gotten this question several times, you know, how hot can it be or not be for me to leave my, car, my, my pet in the car in the summertime? And my flat answer is just, just don't. Let's not even pick a number um, because there's so many variables, your individual pet's heat tolerance, and we can talk more about that. Um, in the shade, the windows, all those sorts of things. The, the bottom line is to play it safe and just don't. My, my own dog loves to go to the grocery with me. She loves to wait in the car and we do it when it's cool, but I, she stays home in the summer. It's just the safe thing. Are there any thing. breeds, sizes or anything that are more susceptible, susceptible so, to heat? Um, the dogs with short faces, brachycephalic breeds, things like pugs, boxers, bulldogs, they have genetically uh, uh, harder time cooling themselves and, and breathing. And so those um, higher heat environments can be especially dangerous. Heavy coated dogs, you know, potentially gonna have a, a harder time cooling themselves. So um, there definitely are a, a subset of dogs that have um, more problems, but in general, there's not a breed. I would say your dog is fine being in a hot car. There is not such a breed. Okay. What about the tiny little dogs? People usually bring those everywhere. Right. right. And, um, <laughs> they do. They, they tend to be very portable. Um, they fit in purses and backpacks, and um, and and again, it's just it's just not smart. It's there. Uh, it's just not wise. Um, I think the public is becoming more aware of this problem. I think you're more likely to come back to a a busted car window and, and, and the police being called out of safety for your pet. And I don't blame those citizens at all. I mean, I, I, that's the right thing to do. So um, uh, the bottom line is leave them home where it's cool and they're safe. Great, do dogs sunburn? They can in circumstances, uh, there are certain areas like on the nose where sometimes dogs um, don't have an, um, sufficient pigment. They might be have some pale areas. Those areas tend to, to sunburn. In general, it's not a big problem because most dogs' noses are darkly pigmented and it's more resistant. So in general, it's not a big problem. It's only on a, a few sort of rare cases where, where dogs have issues with the skin of their nose that we have to worry about that. So okay. it's actually the you know, the, the soft part right. tissue of the end of yep. their nose, not necessarily right. on the what top. What we call the nasal plane, where the, nos the, the hairless skin around their nostrils. Mm -hmm. And then what about, because I just took my dog for a walk and I made her walk on the grass instead of the pavement. Smart. Yeah, pavement can get really hot and their pads, although they're really tough, they absolutely can burn. Um, and in a situation like that, they're probably going to burn all of their feet and that's going to be really painful. So allowing them to walk on, um, you know, gravel or grass ideally or walking in the cooler parts of the day, um, early morning, later in the evening when things have had a chance to cool down. But pavement, yeah, it, it can be dangerous. That black really holds a lot of heat. Well, walking in the grass, weeds, fields, whatever, what's the best prevention against ticks? And so ticks. Probably, We've had a lot of ticks too. And, it, and really ticks are only going to get worse. They're, they're expanding their territory. Um, where, where it seems like we're finding new diseases all the time. The ticks that we really worry about for pets in this part of the country are the deer ticks, or what's also called black-legged ticks. Um, uh, the, so there's three things you need to do. One is just basically inspect your pet at the end of the day. Physically remove anything you find. Obviously, that should remind you to do the self, same thing for yourself, because if your dog's getting ticks, you're getting ticks too. Then there is um, good vaccination options. Um, there's a couple different uh, options on vaccination for dogs, but it's generally considered safe and can be really helpful in preventing the disease. Not perfect, there's no perfect vaccine, but it can make a huge difference. And I generally recommend that for the vast majority of my canine dog patients. There are certain exceptions. People say we really don't go places. Okay, we'll talk about it again next year. <laughs> and then there are good prevention options, either chewable, topical, or there's some good collars. So, so there's different, those collars, um, can help repel, but they also kill. And then the tulips and the topicals basically kill the tick before they have a chance to transmit the Lyme disease to okay. your pet. So that's what it that's what it does. It doesn't repel the tick from your dog, but it helps. Right. The chewable and the topicals aren't don't in, in most cases, as far as I know, don't claim to repel. Okay. So if you find a tick crawling around in your dog, it doesn't mean the product has hasn't isn't working, it just hasn't had a chance to work. Because the tick has to bite the dog to take the medication from the oil in the blood, and then they die within about 
24 hours, hopefully before the disease goes from the tick to the dog. Okay. So examination, removal, vaccination, and some sort of uh, preventative. Yep, I've been finding a lot of my dog's tails. It seems that's, they love to catch on right there when they're going through it's the probably, weeds. probably, you know, they're, the, the way ticks, they, they, they hang out on vegetation and, and they're, they have eight legs like spiders, and they're just waiting for something warm and fuzzy to walk by. So a tail is a perfect opportunity to catch a ride. Now we're running out of time, but we've got 4th of July and we've got yep. some thunderstorms and some dogs do not like yeah. either. Thunderstorms and um, fireworks, they're, they're similar. Thunderstorms are, are somewhat more multi-sensory because of the, the flashing and the light and the thunder and the rain. There's a lot of things that can come, but the fireworks are primarily the sound. Um, as far as um, managing that, there are medication options. There are other things. Uh, there are products called Thunder Shirts that are soft compressive wraps that can comfort some dogs. There are um, nutritional supplements, plant-based products that might be helpful. Um, you know, there's also management. Do you play background noise? Do you try to drown things out? So it's a, you tend to have to really tailor a program. There's nothing that works for every single dog. It's a real challenge, um, but we, it's something we talk about a lot and, and we, definitely want to address because that it's not just your dog being silly and goofy. They're basically having a panic attack. It affects their quality of life and they're suffering in those circumstances. So it's important not to ignore it and really um, ask us for help. Okay. And yep. if they ask you for help, you're in a new building we and are. the move is going well and you're almost done with uh, the move, right? We, uh, so today is day two of the move. We're hoping to be open for uh, appointments tomorrow. Um, uh, it, it's a lot. There's a lot of moving pieces. I've got a lot of good help. My staff's been great. Um, we're really excited about the space. We're, we're moving from three to seven exam rooms. We're going to have much more dedicated cat-only space. Um, we're going to have expanded uh, dentistry space. Um, and the new facility will allow us to uh, apply for certain certifications, national certifications, that weren't possible where, for where we were before. So we really feel like the new building is a a better reflection of, of the level of service we're trying to provide for our clients and our patients in the community. We're, we're really excited. We're really proud of it. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate yes, thank it, especially you. on a busy day. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's been a, a, a great distraction from the chaos. So I'm, I'm happy to be here anytime. Appreciate it.